Tiny Blanche's dinner party. Today, my other 12 year old twin, Joel, chose the recipe. He left all through Auntie's recipes and he picked this one because he loved the name of it. It's called Bumblebees. I'm not 100% sure that he's going to like the taste of it. Uh, they have ginger in the recipe and I know ginger can be a bit of an acquired taste. I'm not a huge fan of ginger myself, so I don't know that I've ever really given the kids anything with ginger in it. But I do know that Nana and Auntie absolutely loved it. I can remember for birthdays, Christmas, anything we bought them a gift for, we would always get them some chocolate covered ginger. So they would have absolutely loved this recipe and um, I'm excited to make it. Auntie did say you can put some uh, chopped mixed nuts in there. I won't because if the kids do enjoy it, they can take it to school if there's no nuts in it. So going to make it today and uh, I will give you an honest opinion and fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed the kids love it. So I'll show you the recipe now and the ingredients that we're going to need. This is the recipe here. This is the bumblebees. You can take a screenshot, but again, as I, I will always say, I will type it in the recipe box below because I know auntie's writing can be a little bit difficult to read. First ingredient, auntie has said one quarter of a cup of preserved ginger. Now I ended up getting, I, I couldn't find preserved ginger anywhere. From what I can gather from Google, preserved ginger is young ginger root preserved in a syrup. Uh, the only way you can get it now is basically to make it yourself. I did Google what would be a good substitute and it said candied ginger. So I've bought some ginger rolled in sugar and we'll just see how that goes. So we need one quarter of a cup finely diced of ginger, half a cup of sultanas, half a cup of finely chopped pitted dates, half a cup of raisins. We need a half a cup of desiccated coconut and one quarter of a cup of, oh that light's not good is it? Oh there we go. We need one quarter of a cup of sweetened condensed milk and then we need an extra one quarter of a cup of desiccated coconut to roll our bumblebees into. So in auntie's recipe it says to chop all of the fruit finely. I, after about a three second argument with myself, I have decided I'm going to use a food processor and not a knife and chopping board. Just going to make life easier for myself and I'm sure Auntie would have done this too if she had the uh, equipment. <laughs> so basically all the ingredients I told, me, told you before and that will be in the description box below. I'm just going to chuck in the food process processor. I'll put in all of the fruit and the coconut, chop it all up small and then we'll put the condensed milk in. Let's get started. looking nicely chopped. I'm now going to add, uh, auntie's got one quarter of a cup of condensed milk or until it forms a stiff dough. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in. I will eyeball it. I'll just pour a little bit in, which I think would be, that would be about a quarter of a cup. We're going to give that a mix to form a stiff dough. As you can see, it's, it's come away from the middle, it's moved up to the sides, it's quite a stiff dough, so I think that will be okay to roll now. So we're going to start rolling it and uh, or form into balls and then we'll roll it into the coconut that I've got set aside. Okay, before I start rolling my bumblebees, <laughs> I love that name, it's really cute. 
I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 degrees and auntie says to lightly grease an oven tray. I'm going to use baking paper. It just makes the cleaning up a little bit easier. So I'm going to line a tray and turn my oven on. 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Let's start rolling them. Um, I'm a little bit precious, so I'm going to wear some gloves. Just, I don't like getting food under my fingernails. <laughs> and working in nursing, I just, I don't know. I know all of germs that can harbour under these things. So I'm a little bit precious. Okay. Move this out of the way, we don't need it. Pop this now. So, oh, hang on. I need to be so you can see me. How's that? Maybe I need to, I'll bring the camera a bit closer, one sec. All right, I think we're set up. I'm still getting used to all of this camera angling and filming stuff. There's a lot to learn, surprisingly. Okay, now we need to roll it into, oh yeah, that's perfect, into small balls. As you can see, it's rolling nicely. Oh, there we go, is it focusing? And then just roll it into the coconut and pop it on your tray. I'm doing probably teaspoon size. These remind me of protein balls. So I don't think they would have had protein balls back in back in Auntie's day, but this, you know, could be where they get the idea from. Okay, I'm gonna keep continue rolling all of these. I'm really pleased about. One is I'm really glad I used my food processor because it's beautiful consistency and I think it would have taken me a long time to do that using a knife and fork, uh, a knife and chopping board. The other thing I'm really glad about is I'm so glad I wore gloves. <laughs> I can just do this and have nice clean hands. I only just need to clean up my bench but my hands are beautiful and clean. So these you don't have to spread them out on the tin or on the um, tray because there's no flour, they're not going to spread. So it doesn't really matter how closely together you have them. And they need to go into the oven for, Auntie has written five to 10 minutes or until they are golden. So I'm gonna pop them in the oven now. Oh, and if you have chickens, any leftover coconut that you didn't, that you were using for rolling and, and you're done with, can go to the chickens. They eat everything, <laughs> everything. Just as long as it's not the main part of their diet, it's fine as a one-off treat. Here is a bucket of scraps for my chickens. You can see I've got the coconut on the top here that I was rolling my balls in that I, I that it was excess. Then I've got celery underneath. I think there's some carrot. I've got banana skins. Because I talk about my chickens all the time, I'm going to take you down with me and you can see them, my lovely girls. And of course, Murphy has to come along for the walk. Come on, Murphy. Good boy. Chuk, 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 chuk. Now, just so you know, the chickens do have two and a half acres to roam around on. They've got this little area where they sleep at night. Hi, Jalen. Hi. Come on, Murphy. Oh, here come the other girls. <laughs> come on, come on chickens. It's been raining a lot, so the ground is really, really soggy. Hi girls, hi. Where is everyone? You've come from nowhere. Come on girls. Oh my gosh, it's really soggy. Hang on girls, I'm gonna feed you up here where it's a bit drier. Come on. Here's your scraps. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yummy. Oh, whoops. 
You're shouting coconut. Sorry, darling. And carrot and everything. Enjoy, girls. All right, sweetheart. Let me. That's all right. You'll get it off. Murphy, you're not allowed to eat it. It's the, for the girls, all right? How many have we got there? Two, four, six. We're missing a couple. I'm just going to check if they've left us any eggs in return. Oh my gosh, it's so soggy down here. Look at the ground. It's been raining a lot. It's been on the news about the flooding. And Do we have any eggs? Oh, there's a few in there. We'll come back and collect them later. We normally get about eight, seven to eight a day. Very good girls, very good layers. I have eight chickens. And if we get seven to eight eggs a day, that's, they're doing brilliantly. <laughs> Murphy's just watching them. He knows he's not allowed to touch their food or them. Good girls. Where are the other two? They didn't come down. They might be up in the top paddocks. All right, Murphy, come on, let's go. Good boy. Good boy. And no show without punch. Here's the kitty cat. Oh, you're saying hello. <laughs> Pretty girl, you're saying hello. Oh my gosh, how funny. I went to the cupboard to get a glass of water. Can you tell I'm a mum of boys? <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't even know which character this is. <laughs> Looks like an evil Batman. <laughs> I have my bumblebees here. They still look so much like protein balls to me. I keep calling them balls. I will have a little taste test now because as I said, I'm not a lover of ginger, but there's only a quarter of a cup in there and it was a candied ginger, so it might kind of mask the flavor a little. Anyway, I'll give it a taste and I'll let you know what I think. I actually, for some reason, it tastes like almost citrusy. I feel like I taste lemon in there and there was no lemon put in. The ginger, I've got like a slight hint of it, but it's more like what it would be in a meal. And I do use crushed ginger in cooking, like mainly in Thai cooking or whatever. Um, they're, they're good. And it's, it's good that the kids can take these to school. I was, un, I was really unsure about these. And I, I think I've said this about a few of auntie's recipes. I need to stop being doubtful. They're really yummy. I'm sure they would be, I mean, they're nice warm. I'm sure they will be lovely cold. But I will put in the description box below what the kids' opinions were when they get home from school. As I said, there's no nuts. They can take these to school tomorrow if they like them. So, another good one, Auntie. Thank you. <laughs> I've got to stop doubting you. <laughs> and the ingredients. Because sometimes the ingredients just all sound a bit odd together. But they just seem to work. Very nice. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you for the next recipe. <laughs> Bye.